Welcome to District Di Dialogue. I am Ann Jones Guider. I'm District 4 Commissioner here in Douglas County and I welcome you to this program. We have a very special guest and I am honored to have him on the program. He is so involved in this community. He does so much good. Uh, he, he, it's not just words that he speaks. He puts his words into action and that's what we need here in the county. And. Uh, my special guest is uh, Mr. Frank Smith. He is CEO of Life Tools Community Development Corp. And um, that entails the, the pantry and the care place, mm -hmm. which are for people that cannot afford food or health care <laughs> here in Douglas County. So, um, and I also have another special guest, and I'm only going to say her first name because I couldn't with my southern accent and my <laughs> southern drawl, I could never pronounce her full n last name, and I'll let her introduce herself. But Ochekna is my uh, intern for the, the year, and she's been very, very helpful, and uh, she's just on top of everything. Uh, anytime I request something from her, she's just gung-ho and ready to go. So uh, Ochekna, if you could just tell the audience a little bit about uh, where you go to school and what you plan on doing when you get out of school. Hi everyone, my name is Uchenna Ihekwurume. I'm 17 years old. I go to Douglas County High School and I am a senior. I'm the president of African Student Union at my school and when I go to college I plan to go to Boston University, study political science and anthropology. Boy, what a future we have there. <laughs> But uh, I've asked her to sit in on this interview as part of her internship just to uh, get a feel of some of the things that a commissioner may have to go through. But uh, I've also invited her to ask some questions to uh, you, uh, Frank, if you don't mind, as we go through uh, exactly what the pantry is all about. And uh, she may have some questions relating to uh, you know students that might want to volunteer in it. So. Uh, with that said, I will uh, uh, ask you, Frank, just to give a history to the people of Douglas County that do not already know about the pantry, because how, how long have you been here? In Since 2001. 2001. So you've been doing this for a long time, but not everybody knows about you even at that. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of newcomers moving in, and we just uh, want to get the word out. Uh, it's a ministry yeah. and with that I'm going to turn it over to you just to explain how it all got started where it got started and and so forth so well thank you so much Commissioner Guider it's a pleasure being here with you so my second time and I'm just so grateful that you invited me back after the first time <laughs> so we did such a here. good job that first time <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much um, the pantry actually got started right around 2001 uh, when Pastor Dave Devine invited my wife and I to come down and help him start the church at Chapel Hill. Uh, during that time, early on, my wife asked if he would allow her to do a little food pantry out of what we called the Ministry Center on uh, Fairburn Road and uh, got a little closet set up and she served about five families a week. Oh my goodness. And uh, started there and over the years um, it uh, it stopped being a, a pantry for a while because we moved our facilities down to the Church of Chapel Hill location down at 5357 Chapel Hill Road. And it was so far from downtown Douglasville, right. didn't really feel a need to have a pantry down there. But uh, soon uh, uh, another church came to Pastor Dave and said, hey, we've got this ministry on Church Street that uh, we're feeding people, but we're really feeling a, a I need to move the direction of where our ministry is going. Mm -hmm. Wondering, would you like to handle this food pantry? And Pastor Dave said, yes, absolutely. Now, what was the name of that? That was you? Lighthouse Ministries. Lighthouse Ministries. Yes. And where was it located on church? Um, you know the old Napa building on Church Street? Yes. Right behind Hudson's Barbecue. Okay. That's where All it was right. located. All right. We okay. opened our doors there February 8th of 2008. Okay. And we served eight families. And then the next Saturday, we served 15 families. And then the next Saturday, it was 
55 families. So location is very location crucial. Location was <laughs> crucial. And word of mouth was getting out there. Yes. And interesting story, uh, we opened up in February and um, the first part of November, we got a call from a company saying, hey, we've got 900 turkeys oh my goodness. that we'd like to donate to you all. Yeah. And I go, can I get back with you in a few minutes? <laughs> where are you going to put <laughs> 900? 900 turkeys. I'm going, uh, I don't know where I can put 900 yeah. turkeys. Because at, at that point, we were a very small facility. Right. And uh, I made some phone calls, and I called him back. I said, hey, listen, can you give me 450 and save 450 till January? He said, absolutely. Oh, my goodness. And here's the story behind the story. Can you give the name of that company? Uh, he wants to remain anonymous. Okay, all right. But it's a major food wholesaler warehouse business. All right. Okay. I can tell you that. Okay. The reason those 900 turkeys became available, the forklift driver took the fresh turkeys and put them in the freezer. And so this company could not sell them as fresh. Oh my goodness. So now we had 900 frozen turkeys, 450 we gave out at Thanksgiving, the Saturday before Thanksgiving. And we've been doing 500 turkeys ever since from the same company. Oh my goodness. So they love what we're doing. Is that a divine intervention? That was, <laughs> that was definitely a divine intervention because that Thanksgiving distribution really launched us to another yes. uh, level of service to people because they saw the, the kindness that we gave food out, the compassion that we uh, always use to give, and it's a no judgment zone. And mm -hmm. people just love that about us because mm -hmm. we've had people come all the way from Alabama. Wadawi, so Alabama. So you don't have to be a Douglas County resident to, to get food from the pantry? No, ma'am. We actually have served um, people in 29 counties, 101 zip codes, and we have nine other ministry partners helping us. So that last year we fed over 100,000 people. Oh, my. And oh 38,000 <laughs> of those were in Douglas County. So see, over a third. I didn't even know you were that large. We're, we're pretty big. Yeah. As a, as a partner agency of the Atlanta Community Food Bank, we are one of their premier partner agencies because of the amount of food that we distribute. Because of that, um, the other thing that kind of launched us into the stratosphere, the floods of 2009. Yes. Devastating. Um, we had announced that we were going to do a major food distribution the Saturday after the floods. All the other food pantries in Douglas County were closed because they couldn't get any food. Mm. We were the only one open at Atlanta Community Food Bank saying, we can't get the food to you. I said, yes, you can. You just have to drive your truck up to Chattanooga, get across the river and get back down to us. They found a way to get to us and we served 650 families that were devastated mm. by the flood that Saturday, mm. right after the floods. And it was, it was a great experience. That just goes to show you how the Lord can take a disaster and turn it into a blessing. Absolutely. I mean, really. Absolutely. Uh, there was so much media coverage of the pantry. It just kind of launched us into the stratosphere. And from there, we just kept growing exponentially. At that point, we were in Crossroads Church. Mm -hmm. And one of their units, that's kind of a neat story. Greg Toller was volunteering with us and his family when we were in the Church Street so location. So you moved around. Why? Right. <laughs> We were in the Church Street location. Greg Toller had, uh, and his family were volunteering with us. And he came to me one day and says, Frank, we, we've got a unit that we'd like you to move into. And I says, okay, uh, let's check it out. It was the old Bourbon Street Bar. Okay? I don't know where that is. That was uh, the crossroads right across from where Highlands uh, College is now. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So Bourbon Street Bar was one of the units that was when they bought the whole strip they mall, bought the whole they strip had to mall. buy everything right. and they had to honor that lease. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, one Sunday they showed up for church and there's there ATF tape around the Bourbon Street bar. <laughs> <laughs> they failed to pay their liquor taxes. Oh my God. So they gave us that unit and God just provided a way for us to build it out at very little cost. Oh and we had a great partnership with Crossroads Church for about eight years. Mm. Crossroads were growing so much, we were growing so much, we need a bigger space. And I was going to them saying, do you have more space that we can move into? They said, can we move into your space? We recognized we needed to make a move. And so December of 2016, God provided a way for us to move into the old Glidden paint store. And Which is right behind. KFC on Highway 5. Yes. Okay. That's, that's a great landmark. 
If you can't find the address of <laughs> 9633 Highway 5, just look for KFC and drive right behind it. There's a big pantry sign on our building, big pantry sign on a pole. Can't hardly miss us once you get behind KFC. But we started serving out of there, and uh, once we moved in there, we needed a walk-in freezer and cooler. A commissioner, you know how much those things cost? <laughs> They're not cheap. Well, I was in Rotary one day, and a, and a friend says, hey, do you need a walk-in freezer cooler? I go, yeah, do you have one? <laughs> he says, yeah, I got one in my warehouse. My son took it apart from one of the, one of the places that we had, but he didn't label anything. <laughs> So you've I got go, to put okay. it together. Uh, well, <laughs> put it back we, together. We, we know people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so dependable um, cooling and heating yeah. and appliance repair, they went and got the, the whole walk-in freezer and cooler, moved it to their facility, and as a jigsaw puzzle, they took two weeks to figure out how to put it all together. Amazing. They, they put it together, and then they disassembled it, brought it to our place, and put it all together, and donated all of it. That's about a $30,000 donation for a walk-in cooler and freezer, but it opened up so many more opportunities mm -hmm. for us. Now... You could have perishables. We could have perishables. Yeah. Frozen food, frozen yeah. meat, uh, <coughs> uh, produce, uh, things of that nature. So because of that and because of our collaboration with other uh, partners in the community, the Atlanta Community Food Bank says, hey, we want you to apply for a grant. <laughs> and I go... Okay, so if they ask you to apply. So you are 501c3. Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay, all right. And so we applied for a grant from the Atlanta Community Food Bank, and they gave us $35,000 specifically to buy a refrigerated truck. And they said, okay, now if you get a refrigerated truck, Frank, this is what we're going to do. We have nine stores that we pick up in Douglas County. So there's your supply. That's our supply. <laughs> And I said, well, how much food are we talking? I was going to ask you, where did all this food come from yeah, besides I, the turkeys? I, we know about the turkeys, but what about all the other uh, foods? Well, uh, well, I asked them, I said, well, how much food are we talking about picking up? And they said, about 100,000 pounds. Now, I'm thinking a year. They meant a month. So 100,000 pounds a month we pick it. That's 1.2 million pounds of food a year. Well, this all, God just works all this stuff out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't make this stuff up. Mm -hmm. We have a, a ministry partner, Good Samaritan, which is pretty well known in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, they just moved into their new facility on uh, Grady Street mm -hmm. off of Fairburn Road. <coughs> they pick up on Monday and Wednesday those nine stores because they are open Monday through Friday. All the food that they pick up on Monday and Wednesday, they distribute Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We pick up on Friday. All the food we pick up on Friday, we distribute on Saturday. So it works out perfect. It's mm -hmm. a great uh, partnership. And so that, that just kind of launched us in another stratosphere because all this food, now we've got other giant corporations calling us saying, hey, we, we want to give you, like January, of Walmart.com sent us a semi-load of toys, appliances, oh. stuff that they <laughs> sold so at Christmas food, and got... Yeah sent back and they said we're giving it all to you amazing yeah it's food it's i mean it's so much more and uh you know just god is just doing miraculous things uh we had a forklift for years we had three different forklifts donated to us mm -hmm. that were all used used forklifts are fine when you're small but when you get bigger and you're using them more often they break down more often mm -hmm. the last one broke down the end of february of this year and I says, oh, Somebody man. just happened to come by that had a forklift, I know. Uh, well, it's, it's a bigger story than that. Okay. Even. Oh, my goodness. Um, my wife and I went on, on vacation, came back, went to church. A couple that volunteers at the pantry says, we know you need a forklift. We want to help you out. So they handed us a check for $10,000. Mm -hmm. Forklifts are not $10,000. they are more than that. They're more than that. It's $22,000 for a forklift. So Monday morning, I'm writing a newsletter to send out to all my pantry peeps saying, hey, here's a miracle of 10,000, we need 22,000, and I had giving levels for the other 12,000 mm -hmm. to come in. <clears throat> and while I'm right now, I'm going, I know five people at Rotary that can help me. I'm gonna send an email to them. So I, Monday, I walk into Rotary for lunch and the meeting, and one of the, one of the guys that actually donated the cooler said, hey, Frank, I got your email. I'm all in. I go, what does that mean? He says, well, I'm going to pray for you. I said, man, that's great. I need the prayer and you need the practice. <laughs> 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 so 
<laughs> so I sat down next to him. And another good friend across, across the table said, hey, Frank, I got your email. You need to announce what you need to the Rot Rotarians. So I announced it to Rotarians. They were going to do something, but they had to vote on it with their board. Long story short, this guy reaches across from me and says, who do I make the check out to? I says, the pantry. This guy normally gives me $200 when I'm mm -hmm. talking about the pantry. He handed me a check for $2,000. Mm. The other guy that I'm, is going to pray for me already had a laser printed check made out for $500. Okay? So this $2,500, now I've got $12,500. Mm -hmm. Now how much do I need? $9,500. Mm -hmm. So I changed all my giving levels, changed the miracle a little bit, sent it out. At 8.30 Tuesday morning, 10 o'clock Tuesday morning, I get a phone call. Guy says, hey, I understand you need a forklift. Do you still need a forklift? I go, yeah, do you have one for sale? Because I'm thinking it's a sales guy. Yeah. He says, no, no, but I want to help. I go, okay. He says, well, how much money do you need? I said, I need $9,500. He said, I'm going to write you a check for $9,630. I go, I only need $9,500. He <laughs> says, well, I, I got to tell, tell you the rest of the story. <clears throat> he says, I worked for an electrical company here in the county that we and the other employees built this owner-owned company so large that a major corporation came in and, and bought it out yeah. at such an ungodly amount, the owner wanted to give every one of his employees a bonus check. I got my bonus check in the mail Monday morning for $96,300. <laughs> I'm giving you 10% of oh it. Oh my goodness. Got that, bought the forklift, a guy doing community service at the pantry says, hey, I work for a propane company, I'm gonna to talk to the owner. The owner is giving us free propane for it for a life of the forklift. He's refilling it, the mm -hmm. tanks, all the time. I mean, that, it just keeps going on and on You and can't on. make this up, oh, you, like you say. You can't make this stuff yeah, up. Yeah, it, it's all God's in. It really now, is. Now, I know you don't run the whole organization all by yourself. That's how I got this beautiful kit. <laughs> I know. <laughs> they say that's a crown of glory. It is. We're yes. both wearing it well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but uh, who are some of the people that are your... I know you can't name all of the volunteers and everything, but what about the, the main people that help you? Well, first and foremost, the Church of Chapel Hill is a huge supporter of what we do. And I think it's, uh, it's not odd, but it's, uh, it's just kind of a little strange that his name is Divine. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, a, a pastor by the name of Divine, you know, over at Ephesus, my pastor's name is God Win. Win. I know it, Billy. <laughs> and I've always thought that, you know, that's a calling from the very get-go, you know. Well, and, and to Pastor Dave Devine's credit, he has always said that it's not about building his kingdom, it's about building God's kingdom. That's and right. if we don't care who gets the credit, God can do some marvelous things. I bet you there's a lot of people that don't know Frank Smith. And, and what you do in this community. And I you've try been to fly doing pretty low under the radar. 18, 18 years, you know, you've been doing this, uh, and uh, these are two huge uh, outreach programs for the community, And uh, but uh, we want to put a face on, <laughs> on the <laughs> night. Thank you. Well, the pantry <clears throat> has some great community partners. Uh, over the years, we've had 111 different churches volunteer for with us, and so people from all those different churches have been volunteering. We have over 50 corporate partners that have donated either volunteers, resources, or financially to the pantry mm -hmm. over the years. Um, some of them are Walmart, some are as small as, uh, well, Gordon Food Service is pretty big. Mm -hmm. um, they're on Thornton Road. They're on Thornton Road, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and just other mom and pop type shops have been partnering with us. What about uh, local grocery stores? Are there uh, sometimes when can you give out food yep. that's uh, the date has just run out or something like that? Okay, <laughs> this, this is always I've an always interesting conversation. This. Just let me educate the public a little bit. <clears throat> best used by, best sale by date does not mean that it is spoiled on that date. That's right, that's what I've heard. That is a manufacturer's designation of what they want their customers' taste experience to be like. Mm -hmm. They say that they want their customers to have the best taste experience possible. And like I love oatmeal, I eat oatmeal every morning. Mm -hmm. The oatmeal on my box says best used by such and such, such, and such a date. Mm -hmm. I can eat that, 
a month later, and it's, I'm not going to die eating it, and it still tastes <laughs> the same to me. And the same thing with canned goods, uh, because uh, when, when once they're canned, they're they have their a long shelf is, life. Yes. Long the shelf. only best used by date, <clears throat> best sell by date, is for the you, best taste. Best taste, but except for to dairy the products, <laughs> except for dairy products like cheese, eggs, and milk. Uh -huh. But even milk. I've opened up a bottle of milk before and had it on the, in the refrigerator for days after. And if it doesn't smell bad, I'm drinking it. Me too. So, <laughs> you know, people in the United States, we, sell, we throw away one trillion yes. pounds of good food a year because of that best sell by, best use by date. If you've got food that you want to donate that has gone past the best sell by, best use by date, we'll take food up to six months after that date and still take it. Okay, and do the local grocery stores, do they contribute yes. to the pantry? The yeah, we're, we're a partner <coughs> agency of Feeding America and the Atlanta Community Food Bank. And they have, they have developed relationships with all the major food retailers. Walmart, Sam's, Public, uh, Publix, Kroger, Piggly Wiggly, I mean all of them. And they um, have developed a program where this refrigerated truck goes to all these stores, there's nine stores that we go to, Public, mm -hmm. Sam's, Kroger, Walmart, pick up Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, all the stuff that they want to get off their shelves because it's getting too close to the best use by, best mm -hmm. sell by date. And then we distribute it. So who are some of the people that work under you, that okay. help you with the I could not do what I do <laughs> without my <coughs> wonderful, loving wife who's been my wife of 45 years. You're a good years. husband. <laughs> you know where to start. <laughs> I, well, you know what? I have to sleep with her tonight. <laughs> and she'd be beating me if I didn't say her name. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, Behind yeah, she every good man is a good woman. A greater woman, really. <laughs> she runs the pantry. I had to step aside from the pantry to go take care of the care place. So she basically oversees the pantry as far as the day-to-day -day operations of it. Um, and her name is? Pam Smith. Pam Smith, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're married. She's not married to Dave Wilson. And <laughs> I'm not married to Cheryl Wilson. Two of our other great partners and help lead the pantry with us. Uh -huh. um, uh, Sue Archer does all of our paperwork you know, behind the scenes. Can't do it without her. And my admin assistant, Robin Giles, oh my gosh, she's been on board with me going on six years. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I did without her. Yeah. It's just incredible, the number of people. And all these partners that volunteer from these 111 different churches, if no volunteers showed up on Saturday, Pam could not distribute to 200 families by herself. Every partner is valuable, from five-year-olds all the way up to whatever your age is, 90 years old. We can put you to work at the pantry on a Thursday helping to sort, on a Friday getting bags ready, on Saturday, bringing the bags out to our customers' cars. We can use you in lots of different ways. So come on out and volunteer with us. So how do they get in touch with you if they're interested in you this? You can go to our website, lifetoolscdc.com, click on the pantry, and there's a frequently asked questions form right there. It'll answer every question you could have about the pantry and how to get in contact with us, how to volunteer, what you need to wear, what you should not wear, things of that nature. So you, uh, you're not open every day to no. the public. And then you have uh, people, volunteers, and people come in on Thursdays to start bagging, I Correct. guess, separating the foods. How do you determine what goes in each bag? <laughs> or we, do you let the, customer, uh, the participants do that? Well, we do first in, first out, uh -huh. and we bag the groceries for our customers. Okay. So we have everything on our shelves dated as to when it was distributed to us. Right. Okay. And we're trying to get all that stuff out of the house first. And then we rotate our stock. So we have another person, Tom Baker, that really is Pam's right-hand person. Mm -hmm. That he is a genius at getting stuff rotated. And so he'll look at the shelves and say, okay, we can give this much. We have this much of this food left. We're going to give this number of canned goods to every family that comes in. We're going to give this much meat, this much produce. And he outlines all of that for us. So you do give meat. Meat. And do you give dairy products? Dairy and products. And eggs and everything? Produce, whatever, whatever comes in like that, we distribute. You know, when I, on a recent vacation before they stopped the cruise ships going into Cuba, I remember going down the street in a horse and buggy and 
and uh, I noticed lines coming out of the uh, building. Mm -hmm. And I asked the guide, I said, what are those people doing? He says, their food is rationed here. And that's, wow. uh, that's the grocery store. And you'd see people walking down the street with a, uh, you know, a, a carton, one of those cardboard carton things of eggs like that. That was their uh, ration for the month. And I, I hear it's gotten worse, yeah. but um, it was an experience. You really appreciate uh, the good old USA when you get back because you see things like that in other countries. But um, if someone wanted to donate to the pantry. They can go to that same website, click on the pantry. There's a donate button right there. Okay, you make secure. it too easy. It's very easy. <laughs> You can give one-time gift, you can give recurring gifts, you can choose one of the giving levels, or you can just put in other and give whatever amount you want to give. Now, is food going to be, uh, you mentioned the, the toys that was donated. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, do you work with Faith in Action or, or the, uh, the Christmas? Operation Christmas. O Operation Christmas. Are you We're, part of that too? Yes and no. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Judge McClain. That's Judge McClain. Uh -huh. he, is, he is the main person over Faith in Action but and Operation Christmas. But he works with the pantry, too. He does. He's I, a very I've heard he's often volunteer. there on Saturday mornings he is. handing out food. Yes, he so. is. He and his wife, Heather, and his son, Peter, they're strong volunteers. And the Faith in Action. Faith in Action, he oversees that. He leaves yes. the pantry and goes to Faith in Action and does that Saturday and Sunday. And I, I was at the Publix the other day, and someone mentioned that he comes in every week to pick up bread. Right. For the pantry. <laughs> right. And actually, we um, pass that off to Leela Myers over the homeless ministry at a Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. She serves about 200 homeless people a week. Now, when you say homeless, are you talking about people out in the woods? Or? It's all of the above. It's going to be people that are in the woods, people that are in Sanctuary Village. People you are, do. Uh, uh -huh. Now, the Sanctuary Village is uh, run by the court system Correct. here in Douglas County. Mm -hmm. And it's a transitional housing for people to try to get them uh, More permanent uh, housing. into a, a job and, and to uh, improve their way of life and mm -hmm. to get them uh, self-sufficient uh, rather than dependent on, right. on the government. But they have to want it too. That's correct. They have to want it. Yeah, it's a free society we live in. Yes. Can't force anything on anybody, right? But I, I, I commend Douglas County that we, the fact that we're getting ahead of the game, mm -hmm. rather than waiting till we have people all over our streets like San Francisco and places like that, right. and uh, living in tents uh, and uh, the public having to go around them. But we do reach out to people that are homeless. Right living in the woods and, and uh, provide them with uh, some counseling and some uh, training mm -hmm. and opportunities to find work and, and so forth and become uh, self-sufficient. So uh, as me and uh, Judge McLean calls it, it's a hand up and not a hand out. There's right. a big difference there. Oh, absolutely. But um, uh, so the, the financing part is mainly donations. Correct. Is that it's right? It's donations of financial support and food support. But let me let me help you the your audience understand which is better. Okay. Both are good, but one is actually better than the other. Okay. If you take a canned good and it weighs one pound about mm -hmm. and you take a dollar, okay, you go to the store, you're gonna spend about a dollar for that one canned good, depending on what you get. For that same dollar you can buy more. I can buy 12 and a half canned goods. Mm. Okay? Same exact thing. Because you get them at a wholesale? Because I get them at 8 cents a pound. Okay. Right. 8 to 16 cents a pound. So you'd rather have the donations? Yeah, yeah you've already got It's easier to carry a dollar yes. and have a pallet of corn just, you know, delivered to me versus having to go pick up a pallet of corn that's not palletized, because it's it, individual cans. Yeah. But all of your uh, employees are, are volunteers. The, we have only one full-time employee, and that's me. Okay. 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 And you're busy with 
two places, really. Yes. Uh, although you've turned the pantry over to your wife, you do the care place, which provides free health care for people living in Douglas County. That's correct. We're very specific about that. Yes. And they, uh, you're located on, off of Thornton Road, back mm -hmm. by... What's the name of that street? At? Well, we're, if, you, if you're at uh, the Home Depot on Thornton Road, don't turn towards Home Depot. Turn the other direction. Go up the hill. Go up the hill. Mm -hmm. At the stop sign at the top of the hill, the care place is directly across the street from that stop sign. Right at the dead end. Right at the dead uh -huh. end. Okay. And it's a three-story building, although it only looks like two stories from mm -hmm. the front because one of the stories is kind of underground. But... Um, we started that back in 2013, so we're going into our sixth year. Uh, we, You're expanding it. Too. We are expanding it. Okay. And uh, about three years ago, we had a nurse practitioner group approach us, and we came into a partnership with them, and they utilize one of our floors, and they see patients that are on a sliding fee scale, but they see our patients pro bono, which means that no right. fee. Mm -hmm. And so that means we have expanded our hours from four hours on a Saturday to 44 hours a week. And the, the doctors uh, volunteer their time. Mm -hmm. Dr. James Lance from Wellstar yes. Medical Group. Mm -hmm. um, just about all of his doctors and nurse practitioners volunteer with us. And Dr. Lance is our volunteer medical director. Very well respected, uh, in not only in the community, but with Wellstar Health Systems. Um, and we have a a lot of nurse practitioners that are overseen by Dr. Lance that are, that are seeing our patients, not just for uh, the nurse practitioners in that practice, but we have nurse practitioners that are vetted through the Georgia Volunteer Healthcare Program and then are referred to us. Now, um, you, uh, you're expanding, the, what are you doing in the expansion? Okay. Is that the, the, the number nurse, of hours. The number of hours. Yeah. Okay. Our goal, we know there's 20,000 uninsured adults the, out in Douglas this County. This service is for the uninsured. Correct. Uh, you don't take uh, insurance. Correct. Right. Okay. Although our nurse practitioners do because they have a fee for service. They, they'll accept insurance. Okay. Okay. But our mandate is to touch those families, those individuals that are 18 and older, that are uninsured. And then we have another uh, category called underinsured. Uh, you're not old enough to be on Medicare, but I am. Okay? <laughs> and so for me, He's I got would a good be. good sense of humor, too. <laughs> I would be underinsured if I, did, if I opted out of Part B coverage for Medicare, which is primary care coverage. Right. But if I opted in out of Part B and, out of, and into Part D, which is prescription coverage, well, you can't get a prescription without seeing a primary care doctor. Right. Well, if you opt out of Part B to get a $4 prescription for the flu, you've got to pay $150 to see a doctor. Mm -hmm. Our patients don't have that kind of money. Right. So we'll see people that do not have Part B coverage on Medicare. Now, you said under uh, over 18, mm -hmm. so you do not address children. We do children not do children at this point. At this point. However, their nurse practitioners do because they're qualified to see from cradle all the way up to gerontology, through gerontology. So, uh, and this kind of service is for minor health issues or just checkups? It's primary um, care. Primary care. We're, we're treating Like if you got, you diabetes. feel like you got the flu or something like that? Yes. You got diabetes? Hypertension. You, okay. Cross COPD. Um, we have a lot of patients that come in with uh, Do needing, you ever refer them to a specialist? We need specialty care desperately uh -huh. because we You're cannot do limited, hip replacements. Right. We can't do knee right. replacements. Um, we're not going to do pain management. That's illegal yes. for us to do. Yes. There are certain clinics that are specifically designed to for do pain, pain management. management. Mm -hmm. uh, we won't uh, prescribe any Schedule One, Two, Three drugs at all. Um, so do if they need that, they need to go to a pain management Do you help people with their center. diabetes medicine? Absolutely. Are you able to do that? Yeah, we have a very extensive. Uh, patient assistance program mm -hmm. and we have figured out uh, the myriad of um, forms that are needed by all the different pharmaceutical companies and we help them. That's our a huge patients. task oh, right there. <laughs> oh my. Every company has a different form and yes. a different way to fill it out Yes. and we figured it out and so we help our patients navigate that and get their diabetes medicine, hypertension medicine, 
anything that's a chronic disease that they're going to need ongoing medical mm -hmm. prescription support for, we're going to help them with. Very good. Uh, Ochekna, you've been very quiet over there. I'm sure you've got some kind of a question for Mr. Frank. And uh, if you would, uh, do you have anything you'd like to ask him, maybe yes. about the volunteerism? Or? I do have a few. Some of my friends, I'm in the beta club, um, hosts a key club at my school, which are like volunteer clubs. Which school? Douglas County High School. Oh, they volunteer with us all the time. They do. They've done canned food drives for me. Really? Yes. I, w I um, go to the pantry sometimes on Saturdays, but I've never had to like go on the website and like sign up. And you I was don't wondering if there's like a limit to amount of volunteers that you could have to go there at a time. No limit. But if you're going to bring a group of people, yes, give us a call. And I'll give you my cell phone number afterwards. Great. <laughs> Another question I have, uh, you sound, this is like a religious um, organization, and we do have FCA at my school, which mm -hmm. is Fellowship of Christian mm -hmm. Athletes. Uh -huh. And I was also wondering if there's like any way maybe, do you have get guest speakers come to speak to schools about your company? Or yes, we can do that. Great. Okay. And we've had FCA come and volunteer with us. We've had the football team and the basketball team come and volunteer with us. Yes. And the football team several years ago actually did a turkey drive for us. They collected turkeys. Um, you still need those turkeys, don't oh you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll take turkeys, even though we're getting 500 every year. We'll still take turkeys. But, uh, yeah, we, we need volunteerism on lots of levels. And about um, the care place, um, I was thinking that it would be, it might be like a good idea to have maybe a field, do you guys do field trips? Absolutely. For the HOSA club at the school because mm -hmm. it's a club for Health life. occupationals? Yes. Yep. I think they might be interested in, you know, having a tour, seeing what you do, seeing the, um, the importance of helping people who don't have health care. Our medical providers, whether they're doctors or nurse practitioners, are all committed to training the next generation. And so we have had multiple young people shadowing our doctors and nurse practitioners on a Saturday, even during the week. And a pretty neat story. We had a guy that just graduated from uh, UGA and wanted to get into Mercer Medical School. Um, and he started volunteering with us, shadowing our doctors. Mm -hmm. And uh, after he was shadowing with us for about a year, he uh, asked me, he said, can you write me a letter of recommendation? And I said, well, sure, are you kidding? Go, Graham, I'd love to. And uh, he said, well, I have, a, I have a, a, a letter here that maybe you could use as a, a guide. Uh -huh. A and, template. Uh, yeah, a template. <laughs> and I start reading this letter, I'm going, oh my gosh, Graham, you got accepted. What are you talking about? <laughs> you got accepted to Mercer. That's great. So we're hoping when he graduates, he's going to come back and be one of our primary care docs. I was wondering if you would be interested in having an intern. Oh, uh, are you kidding? Yes. Wouldn't that be great? Maybe we can help set that up that would be uh, awesome. next year. Yes. You know? But they, they're very helpful to us, and they just bring so much knowledge with them about the school systems and everything. And it's so inspiring to see the young people involved in oh. their community because so many people are, you know, they're just working on those phones and they live in their own little world and everything, and it's good to see people. There. Well, working at the pantry the of the care place, generation you see a in. whole new perspective on um, we need to see the other side. Yes. We need to see the other side of need. Absolutely. And, and, and love and care and compassion. That's right. But um, this has just been delightful. I always enjoy my time with you. Uh, <laughs> I enjoy my time with you. But uh, we hopefully we will get you more volunteers and more donations. And um, I know God will continue to bless this ministry. Thank you. Because... Uh, He's already blessed you with that crown of glory up there. <laughs> and, I wear it with pride. <laughs> but uh, you were talking about the FCA. I'm very in involved with the FCA too. I always sponsor the golf tournaments and everything. And I had them here one time. And we, we had Carroll County, uh, Paulden County, and Douglas County FCA directors. So I think, I, I don't know if it, they can hear that, there's some work going on here in the courthouse and I hear a drill in the background. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's just been a delight to have you here today and, and I hope you 
have been blessed with it too. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's good to know that there's people out there that just care. Yeah. They just care, you know, about their community. And they're, they're, they want to put their words, it's not just words, it's action, you know. And so uh, I thank you. And with that, I'm going to close this uh, segment with a district dialogue. I hope you have enjoyed the show, and I hope that you will uh, follow through and donate to the pantry, the care place, and uh, or go and volunteer, get your student groups to go, your church groups to go, and uh, volunteer for this great cause. And uh, with that, I uh, bid you farewell. Thank you. Thank you.